Welcome students to my session on Community Mobilizer, Role and Skills. My name is Russell D'Souza and uh, I come from Goa. I teach in a college of teacher education that goes by the name Nirmala Institute of Education. So, what is the outline of my session? First, meaning of a community mobilizer. The second aspect is role of a teacher as a community mobilizer. And the third one is skills of a teacher as a community mobilizer. So, what do we understand by the term community mobilizer or what is the meaning of a community mobilizer? I put it in very simple language for you. So, a community mobilizer is a person who enhances community participation by ensuring that the resources of the community are mobilized to achieve a common goal. So, who is a community mobilizer? It is a person who mobilizes the resources of the community for the good of the community to achieve a common goal. So, what could this common goal be? Now, it is possible that the community advocates enrollment and benefits of school going children. Number two, the community desires mainstreaming of the underprivileged and vulnerable members in the community. So, when I look at this, it is basically the act of including all learners irrespective of their denominations in the same school. The third one is educate parents on wholesome eating because we know that wholesome eating is nutritious for the child. So we have a traditional foods and foods which are rich in different nutrients. The next one is literacy campaigns for parents of school going children, raising money to build school infrastructure, access to clean and safe drinking water, better and improved health facilities, protecting children from all kinds of abuse. Today we know that children have or experience different types of abuse. So how do we protect them? So that's one of the needs of community. Hygiene education, developing inclusiveness, wherein people of different backgrounds, they come together, they converge together and they learn to live together. Environmental protection and conservation. How do we go about alleviating poverty in the community? How do we look at capacity building of children who find school difficult? That means there is a common goal here. And all these that I have mentioned are examples of common goals, some of which communities may have. And again, I repeat, different communities would have different common goals which they want to achieve. Some more goals, capacity building of teachers and multitasking staff at school, awareness about the local community. It's nice to know about the local community and every community expects that its members know about the community of which they are a part. Promoting education of girls, encouraging smooth functioning of the VEC by active participation of the committee members, optimum functioning of all schools. So, all these that I have spoken about are the common goals. Now, let us look at some qualities of a community mobilizer. Now, we have to know that a community mobilizer is a very important person. Now, who is this very important person? It is none other than you, my dear teacher. You are the community mobilizer and therefore, you need to be possessing certain qualities which are very, very important. For example, the first one is you should be able to have negotiation skills, that is, bringing about consensus based on discussion. So, collaboration, discussion leading to negotiation. You need to be honest, you need to be a fluid thinker. We say thinking out of the box, but I would just say thinking out of the square. A self starter and a catalyst. You should have that dynamism, you should be like 
sprint jumping, leadership and management skills. As a teacher, you are a leader. You are a teacher leader. And so, it is but expected that you will have the skill. And you need to polish the skill as teachers. Has to be a good communicator. Because if you are a good communicator, then you can transmit the message with so much of ease. So, encoding and decoding of the message becomes very easy. If you are a good communicator, you can encode the message and the community can decode that message. So, if you are not a good communicator, then there will be a problem. You should be good at problem solving. You should be a good listener because a good listening is a very important skill of a community mobilizer. You should be committed. Time should not constrain you. You should be able to take decisions, make decisions, collective decisions, and you also need to be very, very active. So these are some of the qualities of a community mobilizer. So what is the role of a teacher as a community mobilizer? One is to develop a feeling of togetherness with the community. That is, I am with you. That is togetherness. And this helps to build trust. Exhibit leadership in getting the people together. So, you need to display leadership in bringing people together. Converging people together is not an easy task because different people have different perceptions and to get them on a common ground that's your responsibility as a teacher as a mobilizer encourage participation no matter how big or how small even the tiniest attempt that is made by someone respect it because that person is making a contribution encourage and facilitate sharing of ideas reflection discussion and decision making. So let it be a collaborative process wherein everybody has ownership. Create networks and linkages because these are very important and you have to strengthen them because when networks and linkages are strengthened with different people in the community, different organizations in the community to have a campaign or a program or an intervention becomes very easy. You should be able to plan community-based outreach awareness programs or campaigns or intervention programs. Your role is also to source or develop materials and messages needed to spark such initiatives. So materials and messages. So what sort of materials are you going to make use of? Are you going to make use of static materials? Are you like posters and charts and things like this? Are you going to make use of dynamic materials? Are you going to make use of manipulatives? What sort of materials are you going to make use of in these initiatives? So you have to source them. Ensure that all the awareness uh, messages communicate a clear meaning and are relevant to the targeted community. So all the materials that you have, all the messages that you have should communicate clear meaning. There is no room for errors. There is no room for malicious information. So everything that is to be circulated, to be used, should be factually correct. Ensure that the relevant target groups are informed about the planned events or sessions in advance so that these people can make time to be there for the sessions. Schedule community meetings so as to be able to provide a platform for the community to share their difficulties and also to appreciate the good efforts that are being made. So the community people have to understand the roadmap of the campaign or the intervention. Another role that you have to play is arrange the provision of all resources, human and material, which are needed for a particular campaign, 
actively act against incorrect information, especially that which can cause unrealistic expectations and later disappointment and discouragement. Because at times, there could be people in the community who may be using information which is incorrect information, which may mean mislead people. So you have to be very careful about this information. And you have to ensure that such information finds no place, the incorrect information. Encourage and praise community members at all times. This will confirm that they have the ability to develop themselves and move towards becoming self-reliant. Today, we want communities to become self-reliant. We want them to go from dependence to independence. Another role that you have, dear teachers, is to ensure that every decision about activities that the community undertakes is the choice of the whole community and not a few community leaders. Sometimes we have the most vocal voices which overpower the others. So you have to ensure that whatever activities will be undertaken is a choice of the whole community. Ensure that the vulnerable people are heard in the community decisions, including women, youth, the disabled, the weak, and the disadvantaged. So you have to be very careful that you allow these people to speak. They have the right to voice their opinions. They have the right to voice their own suggestions. Remember that every single person has a bundle of ideas. Every single person can contribute in their own way maybe in a small way or a big way, but encourage contribution. You as a teacher have, and as a community mobilizer have still more roles. You have to monitor and supervise the functioning of the campaign or the intervention, which means that you need to be extremely active. You need to supervise every single aspect of the campaign. You need to mobilize persons from the target community who will support and also monitor the program. As a community mobilizer, you are also a teacher. And so you may not always have the time to be, to be associated and involved with the community because you have the school to attend to. So in such a case, you need to have a dedicated band of community members who will monitor and also support the program. You have to determine the impact of the campaign or intervention on an ongoing basis. Why on an ongoing basis? Because if at all something is not going in the right manner, you can realign it. If people who are a part of this particular intervention program are losing luster, they are losing hope, then you can step in and give them motivation. You can support them. You can rekindle that hope in them. Because remember that the community trusts you. The community trusts a teacher. They trust you and you can do this. You also have to write reports and evaluate the effectiveness of the campaign or the intervention program. So dear teachers, do you see? You have a very, very, very big role. You uh, and, uh, and you have to shoulder a very big responsibility. Now let us look at the skills of a teacher as a community mobilizer. We will first look at the attitudes. So the attitudes would include a genuine respect for all members of the community. This means that you need to be respecting every single member of the community. This person who is a member may be belonging to the elite class or maybe the middle class or he may be just a poor person or maybe educated or least educated or uneducated. You have to express genuine respect towards every single member of the community. Remember that as teachers, we are respected 
and we need to respect others. We command respect. As teachers, we don't demand respect. And so, we should learn to respect others. And so, displaying a genuine respect for all members of the community. Being non-judgmental. Being non-judgmental and have an approach of acceptance. So, we accept people the way they are. Have an understanding that different people have different views and perspectives. Not all people will look in the same way. Our sights are different. And how do you get these different viewpoints? How do you get these different perspectives together without getting angry, without losing hope, without losing sight? How do we unfold all these different views and perspectives? That's our attitude. A belief in community capacity to take effective action. So, we believe that the community has the potential to be effective, to plan action, to execute action and to grow. Also, an attitude which displays a willingness to examine and challenge your own opinions and your own beliefs. That means, being open-minded to my own self, to examine my own thoughts, my own feelings, my own beliefs, my own emotions. So, attitudes are very important for us as teachers who are community mobilizers. The second one is general personality skills. We need to be a good communicator, especially when it comes to listening, speaking, reading and writing. Why? Because we need to listen. We need to listen to people. We need to listen to the community members. We need to listen to their difficulties. We need to listen to the areas where they want our support. We need to give them that type of support that will make them feel confident, that will make them feel happy. We also need to speak. And when I say speak, we should know how to articulate our thoughts. We need to know what words we are going to make use of. We just cannot be making use of any words. So, a thought process and uttering those words. So, speaking is very important. Reading, because we have so many materials that probably we have to go through, which will be made use of in the mobilization program. And also writing, because we have a lot many reports to be written. So, as a teacher, we need to have a good writing skill because the report has to communicate something in a very concrete manner. Somebody who reads it should be able to understand the report, that this is what is done. You should have good facilitation skills to enable communities to conduct their own analysis of their lives and situations. So, as a teacher, how do you facilitate the community? How do you encourage them to analyze their own lives? We as teachers facilitate in school. We facilitate learning. We are navigators of learning. How do we come to the community as a community mobilizer and become a navigator? A facilitator for this community people. An ability to gently handle opinions, perceptions uh, very sensitively. It's a very important skill. Opinions and perceptions differ. How do we handle them? These are very delicate, they're very sensitive. And so, how do you handle these sensitive, delicate things? delicate things. Another very important personality skill is to be self-motivated, creative and risk-taking. So, if you are self-motivated, it means you are self-fired and so you can do things without difficulty. A creative mind will naturally lead to creative expressions and you would find different ways to handle and also, you will be able to have this risk-taking ability. We look at knowledge. 
Now, knowledge is another very important skill that you as a community mobilizer needs to have. So, what does knowledge include? It includes knowledge about the community mobilization process. And that is, how do I go about mobilizing the community? You just don't run into a community and mobilize a community. You follow a process. You follow a protocol. And so, what is that process? And you as a teacher should have an understanding about this community mobilization process. You should be able to have a thorough understanding of the principles of community mobilization. What are the principles on which community mobilization takes place? The third important aspect is knowledge of education related issues and problems, causes and effects. So, if you have your antenna open as teachers and if you are sensitive to the community, then you would be able to have first-hand knowledge and information about difficulties and issues and problems and causes and effects in relation to education. And the last one, of course, not the last, there are many more, but in my presentation, understanding of the ethical issues related to community mobilization. So, as I have said earlier, and I repeat, teacher is the most ethical person. This is what is the perception of community. And therefore, when we look at community mobilization, it is very important that we understand ethics. And we are ethical at all times in every single transaction with the community. The next skill is organizational skill. Now, as teachers, I am sure that all of us have very good organizational skills because we organize so many programs in school. We have so many initiatives that are planned in school which call for our ability to organize. We have uh, sometimes school community partnerships in which we organize uh, maybe campaigns and things like this. So, I understand that all of us are good organizers. But we still need to look at organizational skills. So when I look at organizational skills, it is basically the ability to identify capacity building needs among communities. For example, leadership skills, networking and partnership building skills. The second one is an ability to help communities mobilize resources. So, how can you help the community to mobilize its own resources? So, comes into existence your, your ability to help them to mobilize. How would you organize this? Advocacy skills that will support, assist and promote the initiative, project planning and management skills. So if you look at all these organizational skills, they are extremely important for us as teachers and for you as a community mobilizer. So if I run through the whole presentation, the teacher is a very important community mobilizer. You have the ability, you have the dynamism, you have the qualities, you are looked in society as an important person by virtue of being a teacher. People trust you, people have faith in you, people place their hope in you, you are a leader and by virtue of having all these qualities and attributes, you can spearhead any community mobilization program or any campaign or any intervention program. If you recall the common goals that I looked at and you try to implement any of these in the community, I'm sure you would 
taste success. Thank you.